Well, guess what? You know what, pre you know what percentage they pay in taxes? 8%. E-I-G-H-T. I pay a hell of a lot more than that, man. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. We can get this done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean it. Thank you. Now, as you, some of you know, I'd usually come down and say hi to all of you. They tell me there's a storm coming in. Is that right? Is, still, is that still the deal? That's the truth. Now, don't make a lie. As that, as that scene in the John Wayne movie, and don't make me a dog-faced lion pony soldier. <laughs> All right, well, I tell you what. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the White House photographer to come up, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stand. I can't, I usually shake everybody's hand, but I'm going to stand in front of each section. No, I really mean it. And then, and if you can see the camera, they can see you. And uh, it's the least consequential part of this whole meeting for you. I promise. All right. God save the queen, man. All right, guys. So I got to ask forgiveness from the Lord, okay, ahead of time for this video because I'm going to laugh at things I probably should not be laughing at, okay? The current state of our country is a disaster. And what's more of a disaster is that we have individuals running this country that quite literally are out of their mind. They're just not cognitively there. And they should be in a nursing home or some type of healthcare facility instead of in office, right? Calling the shots and making decisions that affect the well-being of people in this country, okay? You guys just saw Joe Biden give a speech in which at the end of the speech, he said, God save the queen. Now, I'm assuming that he's talking about the queen of England who died, right? Just what, a couple months ago or something like that. Uh, but Joe Biden forgot, okay? It's not the first time Joe Biden forgot that somebody was dead or had died and seemed to, um, again, not remember that during a speech. And I want to thank all of you here for in including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. But, you know, hey, you're not supposed to ask questions, okay? You're not supposed to ask questions about Biden's mental state or else you're ableist, right? You're ableist or you're ageist, okay? You're some type of a bigot, okay? However, we, we do got to ask questions, okay? Because this is going a little bit too far, right? It's going too far, okay? Because it's not just Biden. We also got to talk about John Fetterman and has been struggling to recover after suffering from a stroke. Now, this guy was voted into office anyways uh, because people, I don't know. I don't know what went down out there in, in Pennsylvania in regards to that Senate election. But the guy's in office, right? The Democrats, because they vote blue no matter who, they put him in office, right? And um, again, he's been struggling ever since. Uh, he just gave a speech on infrastructure uh, in regards to what's going on out there in State 95 in, in, in Pennsylvania. And it just didn't go over too well. Earlier today, some uh, com some comments about uh, the uh, tragic uh, accident in uh, 995. And if you want to make any comments with respect to that, feel feel free. You're recognized. Uh, no, I I, I uh, would, would, would just um, really like to you know the 95, 95, 95. You know. Uh, you know, obviously that you know you're pretty much preoccupied with with 95, and I know I certainly am too. And we know it's a major uh, eatery, not, not just for for Pennsylvania, but for the east the East Coast. And a lot of Pennsylvanians are worried that the delays and repairs bring to its stand still. You know. Yeah. So you see that you heard that. Not sure if you understood that, but that was John Fetterman trying to talk about infrastructure and what happened on interstate 95 because the highway collapsed okay there was a tanker truck containing thousands of gallons of gall gasoline that caught fire underneath the i-95 overpath uh melting the metal beam supporting it and causing the highway to collapse 
So this guy really didn't know <laughs> how to talk about it. I'm not sure if he really understood what happened, which again, is kind of crazy to think about that a sitting senator is struggling to talk about an infrastructure disaster that happened in his state. I'm not sure how you're supposed to legislate or make decisions uh, when he doesn't really seem to understand exactly what happened. Maybe he does, but I'm just saying, regardless, some Democrat heard this and thought that it would be a no brainer for him and Joe Biden to team up and to do a press conference about infrastructure in Pennsylvania. And uh, John Fetterman showed up to uh, this press conference okay and again it was the no-brainer that we all expected uh but before i get in that i just want to let you guys know if you like my channel you want to support my channel you can check out my new merch for example like my racist coffee mug which is a reminder of the 2023 definition of racist according to the left which is anybody who disagrees with democrat party it also has my logo team bcp on the back as well you can check that out at my website gformbcp.com get 20 percent off using discount code team bcp so without further ado roll the clip moments later president a little over a year ago a little over a year ago the president and i were standing right next to each other at a collapsed bridge in western pennsylvania a bridge that i drove over just the night before with my young son and he showed up with just hours hours after that bra that bridge collapsed there and he promised to make sure that any resources that they needed and any help and support and guess what and guess what that that bridge was rebuilt less than a year well well in front of time and again and now i'm standing next to the president again next to a, a collapsed bridge here and he is here to commit to work with the, the governor and the, the the delegation to make sure that we get this fixed quick fast as well too this is a president that is committed to infrastructure yeah and then on top of that uh, the the jewel uh kind of a uh, uh, law of the infraction infraction uh, uh bill that is going to make sure that there's going to be bridges all across like this all across the america getting rebuilt it's a pleasure to be here and to introduce my my friend congressman boyle bile Well, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Congressman Brendan Boyle, but the main reason why I'm here, forget that I'm Congressman. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand what just happened there, right? What you just witnessed. Okay, first and foremost, John Fetterman showed up to greet the President of the United States in a hoodie and shorts, which in my opinion is disrespectful, okay? It is disrespectful to the office of the United States President. I get that John Fetterman is trying to do this because this is his brand, right? His brand is you know, middle class, working man, blue collar guy, which I get, I totally get, I understand. Like I can see him doing that when he's meeting his constituents or whatever on the road, okay, when he's out in towns or whatever, I get that. But I think that when you are in office and you are meeting the president, you're at the White House, you're in the Senate, you need to put on a suit, right? I'm not necessarily sure if you should put on a suit and a tie. I don't necessarily know if I would go that far to demand that, but at least put on, you know, a, a coat, and some pants and a shirt or whatever and look presentable right i'm just saying but anyways uh he goes on to stumble through talking about infrastructure and you know what happened on interstate 95 very you know not coherent okay and then he uh passes the mic to congressman boyle bile right which is not his name okay there is no congressman boyle bile okay it's brendan boyle which uh, the congressman had to correct John Fetterman for getting his name wrong, okay? And again, Democrats see this stuff, and they don't want you to ask questions. Don't ask questions about the fact that you have a sitting senator that can't discuss a disaster that happened in his state coherently so that people can understand what is he going to do 
in order to help fix these issues and to solve problems. You, you can't even have a discussion like that with a sitting senator, right? And Democrats think, oh, this is fine. And then they want to turn around and lecture the rest of the country on country over party. When it seems to me that Democrats and their support of Joe Biden and John Fetterman are putting party over country, right? Because the fact that they told people to go out and vote for a senator, okay, vote for a guy to be senator, that clearly can't even discuss a disaster that happened in the state coherently. Um, it seems to me that you're putting your party over the country, right? You you really are. And it's at the point now where it, it's embarrassing. It is so embarrassing to people in this country that we have leaders who can't even articulate basic sentences or ideas. We're being laughed at. We're quite literally being laughed at in other countries by other world leaders because they know that our leaders are incompetent. And we're literally putting them in office because, well, we hate Trump, right? We hate Orange Man. Orange Man so bad that we would rather have individuals in office like John Fetterman and Joe Biden than Trump. But then again, these people want to lecture other people, you know, on things like country over party. Okay. Oh, well, you guys need to get rid of Trump because it's more about the country than it is about Trump. Well, again, why can't you do this with John Fetterman and Joe Biden, right? Why can't you vote Republican so that we don't have incompetent and incoherent people in office. See, they, they don't even want to do that, right? But they want other people to do that. It's just amazing how that works. These people should not be in office. It's a shame that we have a country where you have people that voted for these people to be in office. That's the worst part about it, okay? And this is why I'm not a big democracy guy, okay? I'm not a big democracy guy for these very reasons. It's because you have people who are... Again, they, they, they have so much Trump derangement syndrome. They hate Republicans so bad that they would quite literally put individuals like John Fetterman and Joe Biden to be in office into position of power simply to say, well, at least it's not Trump, <laughs> right? And this is what we get, right? This is what we get. The absolute disaster that is the Biden administration. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.